Now, when we're using the calculator for an extended period of work, then it's much, much better to use documents rather than scratch pad. Okay? The documents allows you to create a document with all the bits that you're using and store it for later if you want it, but also it has another really, really nice feature that I'll show you in a minute. So if we want to create a new document, we're going to press 1. Can we all do this together? Do I want to save my unsaved document? I'm not going to save that. That was just playing around. Okay, so have we all done this? Create a new document and then offers us the pages that we want. Okay, so let's have a calculator page. You see at the top now we've got 1.1. Instead of just a picture of a calculator like you meant on the scratch pad, this is now page 1.1. Calculator page. So let's do 89 multiplied by 65. Calculator page. Then we can add other pages to this document. So you see here, we've got plus page. It's in blue, so we're going to press control on that. So then that's going to allow us to add another page. So now let's add a graphs page. So we've now got page 1.2. So are you happy with that? This is like um, PowerPoint with the different slides you have on. And you can even see them as little thumbnails. If you go to this thing here, it's got an up arrow and a few little rectangles. If you go to that, so control up, it gives you a different view of your document and it has the document um, split up into problems. And at the moment we've only got one problem there, but we can add more problems to the document. Okay? So if we want to go back down to the view we had before, we press control down, we want to go back to that. And uh, let's add in a new uh, problem. So if we go to document, let's insert so that's four. A new problem. So that's one. Okay. So this time, what am I going to have? I'm going to have a graphs page. And notice it's now 2.1. Okay. So we've got problem one, we've got problem two, and then we've got pages on that particular problem. So we can look at them by going control up. So now we've got problem one, problem two. Okay. So if you're doing an exam, if you're doing a homework, you can keep the calculations for that problem in a separate section of the calculator. Now, you might think, what's the benefit of that? There is a huge benefit to that. Um, look at this. So if I go back to problem one, I can just click on uh, this one and take it back to problem one, um, and I'm on the calculation page. Suppose I want to talk about a function. The question is about the function um, x cubed minus 7. Okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to define a function. Now this is a really useful thing to be able to do. So what we do is we say, okay, let's call it, what should we call it? Uh, G of x. So I'm, I'm defining this function. Yeah? And then to define a function, I use this dot dot equals symbol. So it's blue, so I press control that one, and it gives me dot dot equals. And that's defining a function. Rather than just it is equal to, it's saying it's a function that is defined to be. And we wanted x cubed, so you're on x. Now, the calculator for its indices uses this little up arrow. It's not the most obvious symbol, but up arrow. So if you press that, it gives you a box to type into. So you do the 3 for cubed. Now you need to come out of that box, so you need to press right. And now notice the cursor is down back on the line rather than being up in the box. And we said we were going to take off 7. So pretty happy with that. So here it's above this one. So you press control that one to get the blue, and it's the dot dot equals. Yeah, the colon equals. Okay. So when we press enter, the calculator says that's been done. We haven't actually asked it to do anything other than define the function. It now knows that that function exists. So I can ask it to work out the value of that function. So what value do you want? G of a number. 52. 52. So G of 52, what's the calculator going to do for me? It's going to do 52 cubed minus 7. So, 140,601. Okay? Another one? G of... Now one nice thing to notice is that the calculator realises if you've opened a bracket, you're going to have to close the bracket at some point, so it kind of puts it there ready for you, so you don't even have to close the bracket if you don't want to. Um, G of... Come on, be adventurous. Six. Adventurous. 
Big number. 871. 871. So what's the calculator going to do? 871 cubed minus 7. That's a big number, isn't it? Okay, let's keep going. G of even bigger number. It's not that exciting. Come on, bigger than that. <laughs> Still in the thousands. A million. A million. Okay, so it's going to do a million to the three minus seven. Okay. Now notice it gives you all the digits. This calculator doesn't give you nine digits or ten digits and round off. It actually gives you all the digits, which is rather nice. And sometimes it will be that it goes across the ends of the screen, but you can move back and forth. Why put pi in here? Uh, we can put pi in there. So let's do g of pi. So g brackets. Now, pi, everybody, you see pi is on this button here. If you press that button, it gives you a variety of things, not just pi, we've got a variety of symbols here. We want pi, so we're going to choose that one, but if we didn't, if we wanted to go along, we can just go up and down and choose other things. Okay? So that happens a few times, I'll talk about that more another time, but there's a variety of things on that menu to choose from. So if we do want pi, we press enter, it's now doing g of pi, and it's given us 24.0063. It's rounded the decimal um, to, it's giving us six significant figures there. Personally, I prefer to set this to rather more, which I'll talk about on a separate video. Okay. Um, but yeah, you can do that. <laughs> One other thing, girls, is that if you have defined things, maybe you've defined a few things, if you press var, it gives you a list of the things that you have defined. So at the moment, I've only defined G, but I might have defined lots of other things as well. Okay. Um, so that's just worth knowing that we've got that. Okay, everybody happy with this? How do you get Q? How do you get Q? So what I said was it's the up arrow. So let's do a different function. Let's do F brackets, X close brackets, is defined to be. So it's the up arrow, so we want X. Up arrow, it gives you a box to type into, then you can put the 3 in there. Notice that the cursor is up, you need to bring it down so you yeah. can enter on the rest of the lines. You just press right arrow and it's now down. And then you, so what should we have this time? x cubed minus x squared? Let's have minus x squared. Oh, sorry, I forgot to do the minus, so I'm just going to go back through, put the minus in, and that's okay now. So I've now got two functions. So if I go to my var, I've now got F and G that I can choose from, haven't I? And then if you click it, what happens? So, if we, if we want, which one do you want, F or G? F. F, okay, so you just press enter when that one's highlighted, okay. and it's, it's just giving you the thing to type into now, so you can now use that one, okay? Now, the really good thing here is if we now go to page 1.2, okay? So, what you can do is you can... Um, move using the cursor and click on 1.2. Easier than that is just to go control right arrow and it moves across the tabs. Okay? So control right arrow allows you to move to a separate slide, which is really nice. Okay, so graphing page. We talked a little about graphing pages before. What we want to do is graph the functions that we just talked about. Okay? So, all I need to do is say that this is, well, which one do we want to graph? Let's do f. Okay, I need to say it's a graph in terms of x. And it's got it because we defined it on the other page. Yeah? Is everybody happy with this graph? Okay. Now, this is the beautiful thing. If we go back to the first page, can you just watch this? Just watch this, please. And we'll go over it again in a minute. If we go back to the previous page, so if I go control left, so I'm on 1.1 now, I'm going to change F because I got it wrong. Okay? So I'm going to say, let's go back, let's pick that up. Okay. Oh, I forgot to add uh, 4. I should have added 4. Okay? So now I've changed that definition of F, haven't I? So what should happen to the graph? It should change as well. Okay, if we go there, the graph has moved up. These are linked representations. So on the different slides, you are linking the different things 
So they're all connected. Okay? That's, can I just finish this? That's in problem one. If I go to problem two now, so if I, where do I want to go? I don't need to go across again. Problem two, if I go to the variables there, I haven't got any. Because that's problem two, and that's separate. Okay? And this is brilliant. So you can have your problem, the question that you're doing in the exam, all the different representations, you can do a spreadsheet, a graph, calculations on it. Yeah? And that's in problem one. When you start problem two, then none of the other things are going to be there. You can start afresh. Okay? And then you can store all of this, go back to it later in the exam or the homework if you need to realise you've done something wrong and change things. Okay? But it's all there if you set it up in the document in this way. Okay? Doing it in terms of a document is really, really useful because one of the best things about this calculator is that it links the graphs to the calculations, to the spreadsheet, to the data and statistics bit. Okay? Right, should we stop there with this bit? Then?